In this video, I will explain how to find the PA equals LU factorization of a matrix. So let's jump right into an example. This says, find the PA equals LU factorization of the following matrix A. So we have some matrix A here with three rows and three columns. To find the PA equals LU factorization of this matrix, we first need to know what do each of these letters stand for? Now, P is known as the permutation matrix. So what is a permutation matrix? Well, it's simply an identity matrix whose rows have been swapped to match the row swaps that we perform in matrix A. So for example, the identity matrix of a three by three matrix like this looks like this. We have ones along the diagonals and zeros everywhere else. The permutation matrix is simply going to be this identity matrix whose rows have been swapped based on any rows that we swap in matrix A here when we're performing the LU factorization. So that'll make a little bit more sense after we actually get into the example. Now A is just this original matrix A that we start with. L is the lower triangular matrix. So a lower triangular matrix, that's just a matrix where the values above the main diagonal are all zero. And U stands for the upper triangular matrix. And that's a matrix where all the values below the main diagonal are equal to zero. So let's go ahead and get into this example and see how it works. Now, the idea with this factorization method is that we want to convert this matrix A to row echelon form but we want to do so in such a way that the value in the pivot position is always the largest value in the column. So if we consider this first column right here, currently we have a two in the pivot position, but under this factorization method, we want the largest value in the column to be in the pivot position. So we can see the largest value, column one right here, is a four. So we want to swap these two rows so that the four is in the pivot position. So the very first step that we're going to do is just do row one swapped with row two. So here's what that looks like. So all we did was we swapped these two rows, and now the largest value in column one is in the pivot position. So now we can proceed to try to make both of these values below the pivot position equal to zero. So we'll see that if we take row two, we could do row two minus one half of row one. So two minus one half of four, that would be two minus two, this would produce a zero right here. And in row three, we could say, let's take the value in row three and subtract one fourth of row one. So that would be one minus one fourth of four. So one minus one, which would also give us the zero that we need right here. So when we do these row operations, here's what that looks like. So the first row won't change at all. In row two, we said we'll do two minus one half of row one. So this would be two minus one half of four, which is zero. Then we have one minus one half of four. So one minus two, that's a negative one. Then we have five minus one half of negative four. So that would be five plus two, which is seven. Then in row three, we have row three minus one fourth of four. So one minus one, that's zero. Then we have three minus one fourth of four. So three minus one, that's two. And then we have one minus one fourth of negative one. So that's one plus one, which is also two. Okay, so we've gotten a zero in both of these positions that we wanted a zero in. Now, before we move on, one thing I should mention is that at the very end of this, when we write our L matrix, remember that's the lower triangular matrix, the values that will go in the lower left-hand corner of that matrix, they are going to be the opposite values of the row operations that we had to perform. So what that means is that in this position of the L matrix, it's going to be the opposite of this negative one-half value. In other words, it's going to be a one-half. So what we can write inside of this zero is a one-half. So really, this value is a zero, but what we're doing here is we're just writing a one-half to remind ourselves that, oh yeah, one-half should go in this position in the final L matrix. And similarly, we can put a one fourth right here. So the opposite of this row operation. So this just makes it easy to write our final L matrix in the end, which is always a little bit tricky to write. Okay, so we're done with the first column. Moving on to this next column, our pivot position contains a negative one. But if we consider this value along with all values below it in the column, remember we want the largest value to be in the pivot position. So the largest value would be a two. So what we need to do is we need to swap row two and row three. So let's write that down. Okay, so here's what the matrix will look like when we swap row two and row three. Now, the last step is we just need to get this value to be a zero, so the value below the pivot position. So the way that we could do that is take row three and just do row three plus one half of row two. So that would be negative one plus half of two. So that would be negative one plus one, which would get us the zero that we need right here. So here's what that would look like. So the first two rows don't change at all. Then in row three, we have row three plus half of row two. So negative one plus half of two, this would be negative one plus one, which is the zero that we need right here. And then we have seven plus half of two. So seven plus one, which is eight. 
so this would be an 8. And similar to this step right here, what we can do is within this zero right here, we can write the opposite of the row operation that we performed. So that would be a negative one half. So we'll write a little negative one half right here. So because there are zeros below each of the pivot positions in this matrix, we have now reduced this matrix to row echelon form. So this is going to be our final U matrix, because notice that there are all zeros below the main diagonal of the matrix. So to write our final PA equals LU factorization, here's what that would look like. So let's start with our P matrix. So remember, we said this would be the identity matrix, which started out looking like this. But the P matrix, this permutation matrix, needs to reflect any row exchanges that we did. So we can see that first we swapped row 1 with row 2. So in our permutation matrix, we would need to swap those two rows. But then we also swapped row 2 with row 3. So then we need to swap those two rows in the permutation matrix. So this is what our P matrix will end up being. So I'll go ahead and erase this and write that right here. Okay, next we have our A matrix, which is our original A that we started out with. So let's go ahead and write that. Next we have the L matrix. Remember, that's our lower triangular matrix. That's simply going to be this ending matrix that we came up with, with ones along the diagonal, and these specific values that we filled in, in these exact positions. And all other values above the diagonal will be zero. So here's what that looks like. And then lastly, our U matrix will just be this ending matrix that we came up with. So this will be our U matrix. And one thing that I just noticed is that this negative 4 should have actually been a positive 4 in all of these positions. I just miswrote it, so let's go ahead and correct that. So that will be our final PA equals LU factorization of this original matrix A. And what you'll notice is that if you multiply matrix P by matrix A, you'll get the exact same matrix as if you were to multiply matrix L by matrix U.